Hey guys, Chris and Melton Recycler. Welcome back to the channel. And I promise I'm not becoming a clock repair channel. However, because my shoulder's out of action, these are the easiest little repair jobs I can do and I've got plenty of them to do. So we may as well video them and share them around. This is a much more modern clock than what I'm used to working on. It's still a Jungmann's, which I've met, had a few lately, uh, which is a quality German movement. This one is, though, just a quartz clock. It probably dates to the 1990s. It's probably, you know, maybe within the last 20 years. It's not that old. As you can see, it's mostly plastic. It has the modern quartz movement in the back. But it is German made. It's not a Chinese movement. And I put a battery in it, and it didn't go. And I thought, all right, where, is it worth fixing? And I thought, well, yeah, not only is it probably worth fixing, because I don't think there's going to be much wrong with it, but also... If we can fix it, that's great. We don't throw it out. Even a modern Chinese one, even though it's not economical to fix, why not have a go? If you can fix it, it lives another life. It doesn't go to landfill. If you can't fix it, big deal. Throw out a heap of little parts. So I'm going to have a go at fixing this. I put a battery in the other day, and there's one in there now. And it actually started working after a while. I heard this odd ticking behind me and I looked at it and it was running and I, I set it and it ran overnight and now it stopped again so it's going to have some sort of issue inside the battery is still okay the terminals don't look corroded let's pull the movement apart and I haven't really done one of these movements before let's have a look together and see if we can sort it out okay I'm going to take the movement out of the clock housing uh, and to do that we do need to take the hands off uh, Perhaps the back cover comes off, but I'd rather take the movement out. We get a good look at it. So it looks like there's four Phillips head screws holding the front surround on. The glass should come out. When I say glass, uh, it might be glass. might be plastic. But we'll need to get those off to get the hands off. So we'll do that first. Okay, the screws are out. It should separate fairly easily. There we go. It's only a plastic housing and the dial glass. I am being very careful not to try and move my shoulder. I'm moving my hand a bit uh, and I think that's okay, but my shoulder is still in the sling. So hopefully that's acceptable. Now, that is glass. There we go. A little bit better quality than your average Chinese movement. Now, just to be extra careful so that we do not mark the face, I've just put a cut, a scissor cut in some a sheet of paper, which will work under the hands just roughly, but it will stop. It will stop any nasty marks to the face, uh, because obviously with a clock, people look at the face. You don't want a big scratch across the front of it. Okay, there's hands. There's no second hand. This centre nut. Or retainer should undo. Yeah, it wasn't very tight at all. Then the minute hand can come off, which has two flat sides to locate it, and the hour hand just presses on. There we go. So the hands are removed safely, and then we just have the retainer that holds the movement in. Now, I like to use a large flat-bladed screwdriver to get these retaining nuts out. You could probably use, like, circlet pliers because there is two grooves. But I find if you've got a good end on a screwdriver and it fits in the slot neatly, uh, they nearly always undo. Or oh, this one's very easy. So, as long as you don't put excessive force, if you have a, a poor screwdriver, you're likely to slip and scratch things. But that one worked fine. So that's all we need to do to take the movement out. So we now shall have a look inside the movement and see if we can work out why it's not running. Now this clock movement is definitely a slightly better quality movement than a lot of the cheaper ones that you buy nowadays. Uh, the first thing to do is to remove the handset uh, control on the back. Usually they just lever off like this one. Sometimes the shaft comes out. Sometimes they don't, and they're actually attached to the back cover, so don't lever it too hard. Uh, this movement has a couple of screws holding it together. Most of the cheaper Chinese movements just have 
plastic clips on the side of the casing. And these movements, incidentally, are generally considered non-serviceable. If they play up, you're supposed to just buy another one. But look, I suggest have a go because you can nearly always fix them. The cover came off very carefully there and I did spot some corrosion that had got inside the, the movement housing. Uh, and so now we need to access it closer and I just very carefully uh, lever the movement out of the housing. In, invariably some plastic cogs will drop away or move place so it's always a good idea to film like I have here because it gives you a really there goes one now gives you a really good idea of where they come from when you're reassembling although generally they can only really go one way so that's got the actual movement apart and we'll have a closer look once we take these gears off that's the hour hand there that's the minute hand uh, gear and the spindle through the center drives the second hand. There's the corrosion on the pad, and that pad connects directly with the negative battery terminal. A couple of gears have fallen off the back, but they should be really easy to put back together. Okay, I've moved all the parts onto a nice clean piece of paper because I didn't want any fibers from the blue getting into the gears. We will inspect them all in a tick and just make sure they're all clean and there's no contaminants before we put them back together. Uh, the problems, all right. Well, what we found is in the on the circuit tree the circuit board here you can see that where the contact is made we'll get that into the center of the shot that pad there is badly corroded it doesn't look like it's eaten away too much but there's quite a uh, quite amount of crud on there and corrosion which has been causing poor electrical problems so i'm sure that's the reason why the clock worked at some stage and didn't work at others we shall clean that off and i think that will be fine the corresponding piece is uh, the little metal bracket that goes from, well, essentially the battery terminal on this side here. Interestingly, it's clean where the battery connects. Will that come out of there? I think it will. There we go. It's clean where the battery connects, but it's quite corroded where it touches the circuit board. You can see on the back there, the part the tweezers is holding is actually quite clean and underneath where it actually makes contact or is supposed to make contact it hasn't been that might be a bit blurry sorry about the focus so we need to clean that piece up we need to clean the circuit board contact pad up uh, the gears and everything look okay there is a little bit of dirt and grime on some of them and that's enough to stop especially the cheaper chinese movements i noticed one before that one looks okay one of them had a little bit of black um, i'm not sure what it was but they're not actually airtight movements, so they do get dust and whatnot into them. So we will give them a little bit of a clean up and assemble the movement, but let's clean up these contacts first. Okay, we're all ready to operate here. Tools of the trade. I have a uh, cotton bud or Q-tip or whatever people call them for cleaning. I have a little screwdriver just for a bit of scraping first. A toothbrush, very handy in the workshop. I have some IPA and in that little cap is plain white vinegar and that's what we're going to use to clean up these corroded pieces i have just attacked the casing with the toothbrush just to get any corrosion out of the spots where the terminals were mounted so that's nice and clean we shall address the cogs and gears in a second so what we're going to do first is just scrape away any obvious uh, crud you know build up of stuff just to make the clean job a bit easier just a physical removal of the debris and that will go a long way to cleaning the, the contact up so just gentle scraping you don't want to gouge into the into the circuit board just to remove the loose flaky stuff and also on this little contact as well Okay, once we've done that, we're going to clean the terminal with vinegar. So vinegar is acetic acid. And because the corrosion is caused from an alkaline battery, the acid helps neutralize the alkaline. And it should dissolve it. And quite often you'll see it bubbling away. And it does a really good job of cleaning it up. So you want to get into all sections that have got corrosion on them. And it's much more difficult in an electronic appliance that uses springs. 
but you need to get in there and really neutralize all that green corrosion it's looking stacks better already now that we've got some vinegar on there I'll also give it a scrub with the toothbrush helps get into all the little nooks and crannies that's looking stacks better I don't know how I focus where our lighting is going to go here but that is looking a lot better very quickly I might give it a little bit more of a clean there we go that's looking pretty good all right next step is to neutralize the acid and wash the contact off with some IPA which is isopropyl alcohol and that just helps any any residual fluids of any sort be cleaned up and evaporated to leave our contact less likely to corrode again okay a circuit board I've zoomed right in there so I think you can see how corroded it is hopefully it's focusing let's try a bit of vinegar on it just be careful not to get vinegar anywhere else because remember it is an acid and it pretty much wipes the corrosion away and you can see that's made a huge difference very very quickly we'll just use the toothbrush to give it some bit of abrasive clean as well now to give that spot a clean with IPA Give it a good rub around the area to wash away any of the vinegar. And that contact's looking a lot better. Make sure we haven't got any vinegar seeping into other parts of the circuit. It's looking pretty good. Now, other than toothbrush, you can also use... I've got a little nylon brush here that's actually adjustable. And it's... By turning the end, it extends the nylon fibres to give you varying degrees of, of uh, stiffness to the fibres. And it's actually quite a nice little abrasive cleaner. And that will just help polish any last remaining contaminants from the solder. Okay, after that cleaning, it's all come up really good. I'm just going to give it a spray now of a deoxid which will help reduce any oxidization left and it will protect against any further corrosion you could actually run the soldering iron over hang on we've moved out of shot you could actually run the soldering iron over that and just re re tin it and you could also tin the battery terminal if you wished um, but uh, this deoxid will stop it from any further corrosion and that will dry pretty quickly and we can reassemble it and there's the deoxid spray for anyone that hasn't heard of it. It's a great product, improves electronic connections, removes oxidization, improves connections. It's really good for spraying in crackly switches and volume controls and that sort of stuff. I'll put a link underneath for it. It's not cheap, it's very expensive, but one can will last you a long, long time. It's not like you spray paint with it, but great stuff. And it's really handy for protecting against further corrosion in this situation. So there we go. Now we need to assemble it. I have something to mention about the plastic gears as we assemble. Okay, time to assemble the movement. I mentioned about the gears. Uh, do not oil them. All I've done is give them a, a good inspection to make sure nothing was broken, no teeth damaged. And I've cleaned them simply with some canned compressed air. This is called dust away. Or you could also use a little puffer. But basically, I just want to blow any fibres or debris away from them. I don't want to rinse them in alcohol or anything because there may have been a coating of like a silicon oil on them when they were first assembled. They will still be fine. Nylon generally is pretty much self-lubricating. So if you oil these movements, you are going to attract dust and it's going to cause more problems. Assemble them dry. They will be fine. Um, and just make sure there's no fibres or dust that's got in there. So clean them by all means but don't wash them in alcohol and don't oil them okay time for another assembly voiceover whilst i show you how it goes back together 
Uh, I didn't actually have to edit this one very much. It went together very easily. One thing I find that does help was when you dismantle something, keep the parts from one section in one place rather than just put them all in one container because this side only had the three uh, wheels to go in. There's the hour wheel, the minute wheel, and the one that connects to the manual adjust. Here's the battery uh, connector from the negative side that we had cleaned up and it just slots in there. Uh, and when the circuit board is pushed against it, it connects to that solder pad that we had to clean up as well. So we've fixed the problem. There shouldn't be any other issues. I didn't see any damage with any of the gears or cogs. So we just fit this in here. It dropped in pretty easily, actually. Everything lined up quite well. And then on the top side, we have the second hand, uh, second wheel with the long shaft that goes through the middle even though this clock doesn't actually run a second hand and then the larger one in there and before i put the other one in i took out this actual drive cog this has a magnet on the bottom bottom of it and this works from an, a magnetic impulse from that coil which is controlled by a crystal oscillator so i just blew any potential dust out of there with a little puffer and uh, assembled it back in you can see that it actually stuck to my tweezers. These uh, I do have some non-magnetic tweezers, but these ones clearly aren't those. So I dropped that back in there, and then we only have one little cog there to join the, the train of power up from that little drive cog through to the rest of the train. And that's really all there is to it. So at this stage, before we did any screws up, I just dropped the battery in to give it a quick test. And... I do need to put a bit of pressure down on the circuit board so it connects with that terminal. And you probably can't see this because it's a little black drive gear and the movement's so small, but it was rotating. Uh, it actually spins half a rotation each tick. Yeah, I don't think you can quite make it out there just looking at it on the screen. But I was satisfied that it was going to work fine and we had all the gears in the right place. So I flipped the battery out. And all we really need to do there now is put the cover back on and just make sure everything lines up. Uh, there was just two screws holding this cover on. So we assemble these screws in here. I'm actually getting better at operating the tweezers left-handed uh, because I don't have the range of arm movement. Although, as you can see here, I'm sometimes a little bit uncoordinated. Come back here, you. Uh, so my right hand's quite useful now. I just can't reach out from my body because of my shoulder being in a sling. But at least it's useful and I can do these little jobs. So we've just got to do these screws up. And the last thing to put on is the little wheel that uh, adjusts the hands, which just presses on. And then, of course, we need to just rotate that to make sure that the uh, it does actually actuate all the gears and turns the things that it should. So now we can put the battery in for a proper test. And we can just, I've got a second hand here of another clock that should just push straight onto that center shaft. As I said, this clock actually doesn't run a second hand, but here we go. Concrete proof that our repair has been a success. So there we go, guys. Another repair job finished. Another Yeoman's clock running. Uh, it's been going for about three hours now. Hasn't missed a beat. Running beautifully. Was it worth it? Uh, economically, probably not. I can probably get about 30 bucks for this because it is a German-made clock. If this was a cheap Chinese clock, you can buy them new for about $5. So economically, it's not always worth it. Should we try? I think so. It keeps them out of landfill. It gives us a great sense of satisfaction. It usually doesn't really cost much. So I say go for it. Fix whatever you can. Don't worry about the economics. My business isn't a repair shop, but the stuff I do repair I can sell, which does help me. But, um, yeah, I think it's always worth saving stuff from being thrown out. So I'm going to put this in the shop tomorrow. Uh, another one off my workbench. I'm actually starting to declutter in here quite a lot. So I hope you're enjoying these videos. Um, there will be more clock ones, but unless you all scream, no, we've seen enough clocks. But I'm, they're all going to have different problems, although most of them do involve corrosion when you have a battery clock. However, I've got some old mechanical ones to do. I've got some lots of other stuff. I'll try and find something a bit different or we might get a box and do an unboxing of something. So thanks for watching guys. We'll catch you in the next video. Bye for now.